G'day and welcome to the show. Well, this week we're staying at the Ramada Eco Beach Resort just south of Broome in WA. We'll be checking out all the great facilities of the resort as well as heading out there to the beautiful Indian Ocean to catch a few fish. There's loads of action on the show. Check it out. We get a special welcome to this unique place and get a taste of the Kimberley's ancient bush tucker traditions. That's good. Yeah. We get close and cosy with West Coast whales. Across in tropical Queensland, we go after tuna. Oh, there's a 20 kilo plusser. Oh, yeah. And get GTs as well. Plus Barra, almost as big as our kayak. <laughs> but the biggest thrill comes with a bill, and it's coming up right now. On this beautifully remote coastline, 130 kilometres south of Broome, the Ramada Eco Beach Resort welcomes guests to a pristine wilderness experience that combines modern luxury with a timeless landscape of dunes and desert. My wife Monique and I are early starters for breakfast on our first day here, because we've got a big day ahead of us. And it starts on that magnificent resort beach with a rubber ducky ride unlike any I've done before. I'm going game fishing with indigenous skipper and owner of Broom Sport Fishing, Kimberley legend, Kurt Williamson. Well, our target species today over here in Broom is the mighty sailfish. We're heading north, we're gonna head around an hour up the coast and start working our way back and hopefully loads of sailfish. On the way to the fishing grounds, I've got time to get a brief demo on how they rig their baits. Just pass the gills, just yep. make sure they're all right. These have got a bad habit of breaking off of the head. Kurt is scanning the horizon for flocks of feeding seabirds, the markers of bait fish activity that should attract sailfish. And that's our own cue to get into action. We've got plenty of lines out at the moment. The main things are the teasers. They're working off the outriggers on each side. We've got one of the bird-shaped teasers as well, which is coughing up a lot of water, attracting the billfish in towards the boat. And Troy's put a couple of really nice swim baits on each of these. No hooks in them. Basically, the sailfish will come in and they'll grab hold of that. They'll have a really good taste trying to rip it off. The idea then is for me to grab this Shimano outfit, free spill back where the sailfish will be, because up the top here we've got Kurt who's going to actually pull that teaser right away from the fish, and the fish is all going to be going, where the hell did that go? and I'm going to drop this little garfish right back beside him. He's going to peel off, see the gar, take it. Yep. Tangled go, it. Mate, same thing. Just... Oh, there we go. And that. Yeah, came off. <laughs> he did, he cracked it, didn't he? Right there on the surface there. Spook. Four around. Well, we can't say the birds let us down with that one. But there are also other ways to get back in the billfish strike zone. I love my Garmin Marine Electronics and my Quintrex boats back home. As you can see right here, nice clear picture. All this bait stacked up on the bottom. A few little breakaways, not quite sure what they are, but this is thick bait. And there we go. And this time, I'm well and truly ready for the strike that's about to hit. Coming in on the mullet. Free spool that mullet. Yeah, all right. He's coming back. He's got the bait, but he's coming oh, yeah, back on the teaser. Back here now. Bring it back. Try and gauge that. Yep, he's coming back. Wine, wine, wine. Got him on. Is that real good drag? Yeehaw! Oh, he's going to dance. Hey! Going. <laughs> That's why we sailfish. Yeah. We don't want to um, try and leader him yet. Do you want me to lighten the drag or are you happy? Oh, uh, you'll be right. You'll, just, you'll get yeah. some close jumps here. Oh. Look at him lit up. Yeah, Beautiful. look at the colours. colours. Wicked. Up the side. And again, jump shot. <laughs> Yippee! <laughs> Nice fish. Look at those purples. Wow. Amazing. Get it in. 
Yeah, beautiful. Uh, yeah. You got it. <laughs> you just let him do his thing and then... Uh... <laughs> now, this is the kind of tag and release fishing I love. So you tag most of the fish, mate, or all the fish? Yep, tag them all. They're all beautiful sailfish. Kurt's put the tag in, and that sail is just so impressive. Steer out to the side. <laughs> Good stuff. Port Hinchinbrook is my harbour of choice in tropical North Queensland, and staying at luxurious Ankara apartments is the perfect way to have some of Australia's best boating and fishing right at your front door. I've been staying at Ankara with my Quintrex Yellowfin tied up to my private pontoon. And today, I'm heading out to the waters around Hinchinbrook Island, where there are sometimes surprising dangers to be aware of. Well, it's the monsoon time of the year up here in North Queensland. These big loggers washed out of the, the river systems up here, and when you're travelling along, these things can just pop up right underneath you, can throw somebody out of the boat, and that's the reason why I always wear a life jacket. I've got this one here on my hip, simply because the humidity is so high up here. It's about 95%. I'm dripping wet just standing here. But this one here, I've got the little rip cord. If I fall over, I just pull the rip cord, put the inflated life jacket over my head, and I'm safe. I'm fishing today with legendary local guide Ryan Moody, who reckons these rocks will yield us some quick results. Oh, bring it on. Whoa, yeah. Going around the bomb here, I think. Okay. Okay. They should be uh, deep enough to go over these ones. Are they? Yeah. Lots of bombies under the water. Pretty shallow stuff. Ah, bugger. So that's rocks and bombies one, fishermen nil. But around here, there's always an exciting plan B. Chase the tuna. That's all you have to do. Cruise around after them and see if you can get in front of them. Right there they are. And we get a cast on them. A quick cast and another quick result. Oh, you on? Come on, stay on. <laughs> Stay on. <laughs> boat driving, eh? Hey? Oh, great <laughs> boat driving, eh? Hey? Oh, you're a champion. Hey? We might have some mates with him. Let's see how... Oh. Wow. Oh, I got him again. Oh, he's yeah, on. right there. <laughs> oh. Gosh, they got some turbo in them, these tuna. All right. Let's have a look at one of these. I'd say a small northern blue, mate. Yeah, I think so. There's... As you said, there's all different sizes out there. Mac tuna. Mac tuna, is it? Mackie, this one. Oh, yeah, look at the beautiful stripes down in the back. They are a good looking fish. Hey, absolutely beautiful. Like a little torpedo. Nice little oh, lollipop. There you go. That tuna fell victim to my Shimano 8000 Stella on a grappler rod. Then I changed tactics and tackle again. So I thought I'd just put a little live bait set up together. This is what's happened. He's all nicely hooked up. You've got just a beautiful Gamakatsu hook, that's about it. And that's the good thing about this uh, 6700 Quintrex, the Yellowfin, it's an absolute beaut vessel. We've got the nice live bait tank down the back. Another fish, you know, there she is. Just a small fish on the Trevally side, side of things because they can grow super big. And that hook has just pinned him, which is beautiful. Oh, a little remora just came off his back. Yeah, nice. Nice Good little one. size. Yeah. They still pull OK. Oh, they do, mate. He was cruising <laughs> around. He just wanted to be caught, so, <laughs> so we it. caught him. <laughs> See you, mate. Oh, 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 oh big shark up there. <laughs> that was a monster shark. Did you see the size of it? Oh, yeah. serious? And the action's about to get even more serious. Got him. Look at that. He's a horse. <laughs> he was a horse. Wow, that was a GT and a half. Just come up and slurped him off the surface. Oh, look at the fish busting up over the back here. Oh. Nice fish. <laughs> well, Ryan hooked something small and was just bringing it in up towards the surface. And he was just about to lift it out, and this big GT came swirling up behind him, did one little pass, and then Ryan kept the bait in the water, and 
the big GT just came up and swallowed him whole. That was about five minutes ago. And let me tell you, it's a reasonable fish, 18 to 20 kilo. Just touching, I reckon, close to that 50 pound mark. It's a really solid fish. Still the skipper and work. It's often not a bad idea to be right over the fish like this too. You can put an enormous amount of pressure on the fish. Big trev. Oh, nice fish, eh? Whoa, there's a 20 kilo plusser. Yeah, he'd be around the 20 mark, easy, mate. He's a beauty. Oh, nice fish, hey? Look at that, that little vibe. Just in the corner. Oh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> That's a good fish. He's a solid fish. He's almost got his own postcode, mate. Oh, my God, he's a beauty. <laughs> wow. It's a beauty. Nice fish, yeah. Spear him head first. Ooh. Like so. There he goes. There he goes. The iconic Shimano Sedona has received a significant upgrade with the new F1 series. Tried and tested in Australian conditions for many years, this series features Shimano's cold forged Hagani gear, a premium technology that's seen in the Stellar series. In addition to Hagani gear, the Sedona F1 series features G-free body, developed to shift the real centre of gravity closer to the rod. Dedicated to all light tackle pursuits, the Sedona F1 represents great value for all anglers. Twenty-six kilometres inland from Proserpine and the Whitsunday coast, Peter Faust Dam may be the most accessible place in the world to hook up a big barramundi. And that's what my mate Koji is hoping to do. He's hauled his tandem kayak all the way up from Sun State Hobie in Brisbane. That's a 10-hour drive, but he's now in the most likely place to make it worth the effort. 20,000 new finglings a year make this barra heaven. Well, we just started a nice little troll along this edge and didn't take long. I've got one of these beautiful Dr. Evil lures on and it got crunched. And these lures get down to about 20 feet. And I was sort of noticing fish down there. We're right over the top of him now. He's got a bit of weight in there. He's just pulling line off at will. A nice big Peter Faust barramundi. All right, let's get up. Have a look at this big one. Oh, yeah, not a monster, but not a baby either. <laughs> All right. Well, this is sort of an average fish for Peter Faust Dam. They actually grow a lot bigger than this over here. A metre 30 is sort of a, a catch that you're sort of hoping to get if you stay up here for a week fishing. But that's a nice way to start. And uh, I reckon, mate, well, we've got to get you one first. I think I that's know. the most important. Yep. Get you onto your first, uh, your first big barra. That's it. Yeah, and this is the place for them here. Mm -hmm. um, gorgeous fish, hey? Now, this fish has got a bit of barra trauma. That's what happens when you pull them out of deep water. So we're going to do a little insertion just in here by the peck fin and uh, release that air and allow the fish to swim back down, down to the right depth. OK, here she goes, yep. OK. We'll release that air. Down into the murky water again. <laughs> All right, mate, your turn. That's we'll have it. to catch a bigger one than that. Yeah, please. I reckon you do. Koji's caught quite a few fish in his time, but never a metre plus barra. Right, it was probably 50 metres into our troll run again. <laughs> Cage is onto a beauty. Hey? Right, we've got leader. Oh, leader's coming. Let's have a look. There is the big guy. Oh, it's a nice big fish. Woohoo! <laughs> that your biggest? That's the only. Yeah, look at the size of her, eh? Fantastic. <laughs> You're shaking a bit, are you? <laughs> That's what happens when you when you catch a nice stonker like this. And suddenly that 10-hour oh, drive is just a fast-fading memory for Koji. Now replaced by the pride of seeing his PB barra swim away to grow even bigger. And there's plenty more barra where that came from. Over 43 square kilometres of enclosed lake waters where those 20,000 fingerlings released each year have nowhere else to go. Whoa. Whoa. Nice fish. Loaded out of the water. Oh, that is a beauty. 
good metre, well, metre five, metre six. Through the middle part of the day when the sun's high, it's often very difficult to pick up the fish. And it's 40 degrees out here, and these fish feel it just the same way. All right, let's get him, uh, let's get him back in the water. OK. On your way. This is the mean looking lure I've been using, Dr. Evil. Perfect name, a lure that gets down really deep. It says 20 plus on the bib, but it actually gets down deeper than that, which is terrific. And some super sharp hooks, driving that down. And uh, the barramundi at the moment, really like them. A classic Dr. Evil from the Gillies range of lures. And that's a beauty. Escaping with the team. Yurmana, Yarogara, win a lung out your money. 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 Yurmana, Yarogara, Indigenous ranger Neil Mackenzie's haunting welcome ceremony is just the start of the unique cultural and wilderness experience Ramada Eco Beach Resort offers its guests. A lot of these flowers, uh, in particular this one here, we call the mother-in-law tree. Mother-in-law tree. Now, we have a mother-in-law fish that is a fish that doesn't taste too good, so you throw it back. Is this, does this taste good or is this, is this a, uh, a, uh, a bad omen? I think this is this is opposite. It more or less, yeah, it's, it tastes better. It tastes good. Yeah. Neil's Yadagara people have lived on this land for over forty thousand years. Yep. Um, evidence here of uh, at least forty thousand years. Yeah. Well, we rely off nature, you see, and if the way we've nurtured the country, took uh, took care of it, is because that's what it gave us in, a t in return. And enjoying your time at Ramada Eco Beach Resort isn't just about being outdoors. The Dragonfly Day Spa's range of pampering and rejuvenating activities includes daily yoga sessions for all ages and fitness levels. And while I'd rather bend a rod than my body, this is what Monique calls holiday bliss. The resort also offers regular retreat packages throughout the year and a wide range of accommodation for all budgets. Essentially, we've got three types of accommodation. So you've got the beach house, we have our um, villas, which are, have some self-catering facilities, and then we have our safari eco-style tents. So if you're staying in a tent, you do have the barbecue area. They all range with different views um, of the property. So we have garden views, ocean views, and then also ocean front. We've got a, a playground, nice and safe. They can, you know, parents can stay in bed and the kids can be out on the, on the playground or on the beach and everyone's safe. Everyone's a little bit different, so it's really great when we, when we check people in, we sit down and, and find out their story, what their adventure is. And from July to October, the adventure everyone wants is out here. One of the great attractions to Eco Beach Resort is the fact that you can just step away from the shore, straight out onto this beautiful blue water and see the whales breaching. And whale watching is a very big thing here, and you can often see it from your room when you're staying there. But at the moment, we're out on Kurt's boat. This afternoon, we're out whale watching. Oh, look at that. Be rubbing the boat. Look at the tail. The tail. That's yeah. incredible. <laughs> I'm gonna get whale snot on me. Oh my God. Almost touch his tail there. Look at the other one darting underneath us here. Having a good old play. <laughs> That's incredible. Right under the boat. That's crazy. Oh, that is scary right now. Wow. Well, he's always taking a little bit of an interest in this, so. That's pretty cool, hey? I mean, the resort's just back in here, and we're just sitting out here in this beautiful day, pretty much like that, right through the dry season. That's fantastic. Oh, look at those two. <laughs> Woohoo!